When you're eating and people don't have any decorum. Yeah. That man said decorum. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, my people, it's your boy Ebi the Kid, and we're here today for another episode of The Kid Show. Obviously, guys, today we got some special guests. I've been um, obviously hunting these people down like saws for the last four <laughs> weeks, and eventually they're all here today. Matthew and Reese, how are you guys? We're good. good. Just disappointed you didn't say with another banger. So it's oh, not a banger. Oh, like, but like, this is, this is serious, <laughs> man. Like, the podcast is not jokes, like the public <laughs> interviews and all of those things. But at least you locked in, at least you watch my stuff, though. Yeah. Listen, guys. Um, you guys have never done any interviews before. And I always say this, why I started this podcast was to give people insight on people who are quite popular in Cape Town because I feel like a lot of people see you guys online, um, see you guys post together, but they don't understand like your, not your story, but like where you came from, how you came mm. up, what do you do? So I want to start off like one by one. I'll start off with Matthew. Like, where are you from? Uh, where did you grow up? What inspired you to the socials? Um, so let me just take it. I am from Cape Town. A lot of people think I'm from Joburg, but I'm from Cape Town. Yeah. Do I look at you or the camera? You. You can look at both of us. Okay. <laughs> you can look at um, this conversation with me. Oh, that was important thing. So yeah, I am from Cape Town. I was initially from Valhalla Park, yeah. and then I moved out. I think I was in like grade three when we moved to Balville, and I was there for like twelve years. Yeah. Um. Then moved out on my own. Um, yeah, that's where I'm from. How I got into socials was Reese's sister. I think we both have the same story for this, but yeah. her sister was like a TikTok cook. Like yeah. she used to love TikTok. That was 2020. And then we always used to be like, what is this thing? Because yeah. she would like walk it around, renegade, renegade the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and then the one day we were like, let's just, let's just do a video. We yeah. did the video. And I think my first video got like 80,000 views. And coming from Instagram, I was like, yo, 80,000 views is crazy. But, but you were a dancer at that time. Yeah, um, yeah, I've always been dance, yeah. Always and been then, um, yeah, from there, I just kept posting. My first video was like a, a broom video. I mean, take it down so you can't put it on the screen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was my, my first TikTok from there. Obviously, pushed Instagram as well, and now we are. Okay, interesting. And how about you, Riz? Okay, so I grew up in Otri, southern suburbs, ah. and then moved to Peru. At what, at what, what age? Yo, I think I was... Probably 13 or 14. Oh, so and I moved to Peru. One thing, how you went to Settlers, obviously, and now. Yeah, okay. yeah. So high school Settlers, yeah, yes. Yeah. And then a few years later, I moved in with Matthew, and now I stay with Matthew. And yeah. Interesting. <laughs> but, but I feel like a lot of people like um, are able to dance, no? And there's some people that can't, you know? Like, I can't dance, <laughs> but my girlfriend can. But you guys are managed to be able to find, like, the perfect balance, like both of you guys can dance in a relationship. Mm. Did you guys find each other because of dance or was it just a coincidence that you both could dance? Yeah. Yeah. We, we found each other because of dance. I would say because of dance because I'm I've been a dancer yeah. since the age of seven. Matthew's been also been dancing. So we met at our company that we joined. and Was it a dancing company? Yeah. yeah. Intimative Dance Company. Yeah. How old were you guys when you met? This is like 2017, so five years ago. I think I, I was 17. Yeah. No, I was 20. You're 20? You're, You're 20? 20? You had to, <laughs> that's actually a long, you guys have known each other for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Any any wedding rings coming now? <laughs> uh, not now. We're a bit young, man. People always yeah. ask us this. Always. Uh, either, I thought you guys are brother and sister or oh, when are you getting married? But you guys do look quite similar to here, though. Yeah. It's, you're going to also look like Jessica one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm starting to look more and more like Jessica, especially now that we're having a child. But my other question for you guys is like, did you guys, how did you guys like start like falling in love? Did you guys just become friends or did you guys um, instantly go into a talking stage? I think Matthew no, should start. We <laughs> so we were, we started off as friends. This was like super, well, she still is super, super quiet. So yeah. um, when she joined the crew, I know myself and Tevin would just like speak to her the most probably. Well, I'm Brandon because you knew Brandon before you joined. Um, and that's how we started speaking. But we were, we were friends for like a long time. Mm -hmm. Then I chased Reese for a long time or so. Really on and off, um, but I wouldn't get right though. What's happening? Not at all, bro. Ah. She was ghosting me left, right, and center. And then in 2019, on my 21st, she was like, um, She just what did she came to me and she, Do you want to tell us what? Okay. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was ghosting Matthew the whole time, but also because there, I like I had a lot going on, man. Like as a child, I was very busy, yeah. So, like in high school, I was also very busy. And then I was like, I don't know if I want a boyfriend right now, yeah. like on that lamb. And then 
Um, we met or whatever. And then I was like, I know I like this boy. Yeah. I know I can see myself being with him. But I was also like, it was going to be my first proper real relationship, like serious vibes, everything. And then I was obviously scared or whatever. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to play this boy or whatever. And, and then I wow. did. <laughs> I play, play, play. Like, no, 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 I didn't play, play him like, like that. Just like I took him for a joke. I took him for a joke. Yes, like he used to come drop flowers and stuff. <laughs> He used to come drop flowers and stuff for Valentine's Day when I'm like not at home, but he would make sure that it's there or whatever. And we weren't together or yeah. anything, but he was trying, trying, and then, yeah. Uh, but what was it, Matthew, though? Like, what what was it, like, that made you so persistent with her? Because I feel like you're a good-looking guy, bro. You could get a lot of girls, I can't lie. Good-looking guy, <laughs> nice, clean, shaven. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, what made you so persistent? Like, yo, flowers, val Valentine's Day... Go eat yeah. flowers and she's not home. You know what's crazy? After I got her the flowers, she said, but you want my Valentine? Because I never asked. But <laughs> so I was like, oh, my bad. Uh, sorry for bringing <laughs> She was like, yeah, but thank you though. And I was like, you should have said thank you without yeah. her. But anyway, um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like I really don't know, actually. <laughs> you were just really into her. Yeah, I guess I really was. And then there was a stage also where we weren't together, but everyone was like, we know you guys like each other. And I was also like, I know she likes me, but yeah. I just don't know what alarm was. Then eventually I was like, you know what? I'm over this. This is like 2019. Um, and then on my birthday, at my 21st, we're still at the address at the time. Yeah. And then she was like, yeah, I just want to speak to you. And no, she said she wants to speak to me. And then she didn't. And then that friend Brandon that I was speaking about earlier, like he literally carried her because um, I was at the bar and then he was like, he just wants to speak to you. And he put her there and then he just left. And then she was like, I just want to tell you that I'm in love with you. And I was like, Crazy after all this time, you say it, like that. it was a bit cuter, but I think that I love you, Cap. In the club, so you confess in the club, the yeah, by the ball, Edris, uh, by Andy's own ground. <laughs> you know, it's house. And what, um, was, what is your reaction? I was actually with someone at the time, but it was like fairly new, so I was just like, hey man. And I also thought that she just said it because she was drunk or yeah. the vibes or something because we weren't necessarily together throughout the night. Um, because obviously I was just like with everyone. Yeah, with everyone. Like all my friends were there, man. Oh, see, you see. see, see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I was loving with everyone. And then I was like, I don't know how much you drank. I don't know what the vibes are. Yeah. Now I'm like, yo, you know, I don't want to say anything. And then next week you're like, ah, sorry, I was just, I was, I was just drunk. Joking. Yeah. I was just, so I was like, you know what? Let's speak when we're sober. And then um, the girl that I was also with, I was like, hey man, this uh, someone said that they love me, and I'm gonna pursue it. And then. She was like, is it Reese? And I was like, yeah, it is Reese. So you actually went up straight to the girl. That's the thing. I didn't want to be a dick and then just, you know, be like, let me see if it works with Reese. And then oh, yeah, yeah. So I was, was like, let me just do the honest thing, told her. Um, and I also went back to Joburg like a day or two after my birthday. So me and Reese only got to actually speak like a couple of days later. The 3rd of December. Yeah. So I was also like she's again she's just playing me because i like i think the day after i was like yo let's speak now yeah <laughs> let's get it done um and then we just weren't able to so no i was delaying if i'm being honest yeah. i was delaying because i was still scared like also i think it was the age gap yeah between the two of us uh, obviously you were 18 and 21 at the time no since you guys are three years apart y yes yeah yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's 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 an interesting one well, it's an interesting love story though i feel like it, it happens like that for a lot of people like myself mm -hmm. i tried to get on my girlfriend and then she was like nah she's not interested <laughs> and then when she saw me in person she was like yo you're actually very good looking and then that's actually how it went though mm -hmm. i can't lie i dm'd her and she didn't respond to me but anyway <laughs> that's how you guys obviously fell in love and i want to talk more about like your social media career so mm -hmm. your sister was very much into TikTok, you said. Yeah. And still is. Still is. Is it the youngest? Your youngest sister. Yeah. How old is she? She's, She's now grade nine, so that is 14. 14, 15. You're She's turning 15. She was 10 at the time when she inspired you guys. Yeah. Do you guys yeah. give her half of your paychecks? No. Uh, no. <laughs> no. She, she, no. She wasn't 10. Wait, three years ago. She was quite young. How old is she now? 14, 15. Yeah, she was like 12. 12. Oh, she was like 12 at the time. Mm. Okay, so so you make your video now about the broom, the initial video, <laughs> and 80,000 views because you used to Instagram. Yeah. What's yeah. your initial reaction then now that you got your first like viral moment? Yo, I remember I was like every five minutes, bro, I was refreshing that thing and I was like, yo, another thousand. <laughs> <laughs> like that whole day I was just on TikTok the whole time refreshing yeah. and I was like, yo, I can't believe this thing is going up. 
Then I just posted again. Uh, my second one didn't do as well. I think I got like 30,000 views. Yeah. Very clean jet, so really off. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, and then we just started posting more. And then I think, what was the first couple of video we posted? Oh, also clean G. We did The Box by Brandon. I don't know if you remember. Um, that was so long ago. Yeah. Was that that was, yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yes, 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 yes. We did that. I was still topless at the time. I'm so glad oh, it's off. Yes. Yeah, this it is yeah. it is brazy. Um yeah, and then we just saw the love and like also obviously the first video I posted I had like six followers. Yeah. And that's just people I know I knew, sorry. And then after that first video I think I had like forty, fifty thousand. Off to so the first like, one. Yeah. But that was that was like beginning of TikTok when people mm. that we weren't really on to TikTok but now yeah. everyone's famous. Yeah. Like yeah. TikTok like no this. Cap. <laughs> everyone is just famous. So yeah. from there, I, I'm sure your journey was the same. Did you just hop into what he was doing? or? Well, I think that Matthew took off first. Yeah. I was a bit more like, mm, I'm into it, but I'm not really like yeah. into it. Um, and I would shoot the TikToks, but I wouldn't necessarily post, post it. it. And I think my first viral video was the Chris Brown one. Um, Go crazy, Charlie. Yes, uh, that Everyone one. was doing it back then, yeah. Yeah, and then also like people started recognizing this the balcony that I dance on, which is the balcony yeah, yeah, of my parents. <laughs> the famous balcony, so... I feel like people started seeing the video. I mean, people started seeing the balcony and they were like, oh my word, this is Reese. And then started attaching me with what this balcony? famous balcony yeah. now or whatever. So yeah, that's basically where it started for me. That was my first viral video. Mm. Okay. Now, you guys are, this is now 2020. Mm. Just, yeah. just, just in 2020. And it goes into lockdown now. And you guys are just going crazy on TikTok, picking up followers, picking up likes, picking up all this love now. Mm. When you are now allowed to go outside, bro, like, how's that when people are walking up to you asking you for photos? Because, like, you go inside. It's like going to chill. You go inside as, like, nobody. And then you come out as a somebody. So, yeah. how was that? How does that go to jail? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It is like you, yeah. go, away, you yeah. go away for a long it's, time and then you come back. And so people I, know you in the, yeah. It was, hey, man. I think it's a lot for me personally because I don't like to speak to people a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or not, I don't like to speak to people. I just, I'm very shy or I'm, like, nervous and conscious about what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. And now someone comes up to me and I'm like, who is this person? And I'm firstly, I'm like, why are you coming up to me? Or like, if someone looks at me, I'm like, why, why is this person at staring me? at me? Mm -hmm. And I obviously <laughs> couldn't understand. Well, to this day, sometimes I'm still like, why, why are you looking at me? But then I'm like, oh, shit. shit yeah, yeah. Can I see? You, yeah, you, no. can, you can say whatever oh. you like. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Like, this person actually recognizes me from social media or from TV. So I'm like, I have to be wary of that. And a lot of the times it's like... It's nerve wracking. Yeah. Especially because you're sitting there, let's say you're at a restaurant or something, someone comes up to you, you, Matthew's awful in his burger, and someone's like, I want to take a picture with you. Yeah, I like Right you're now. Eating, yeah. When you're eating and people don't have any decorum. Yeah. That man said decorum. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot, but. <laughs> mm, but I don't, I don't mind it or anything. I like when people come up to me, but I'm also. Yeah. I'm also nervous, man. Yeah, that's the of your personal space as well. Yeah, yeah. That's very, yeah. very important. And how is it for you, bro? Like, um, yo, at the start for me, I think at first I loved it. I mean, I kind of not really got annoyed, but it's just like you said, the cool them, <laughs> yeah. like timing. I think our first instant where we were like, yo, we really eating. I think we went to now walk at Mag and Bean in the sky. We were like mid meal, and he was like, my daughter wants a picture with you, and we were like, but we're well, eating, uh, and he was like, yeah, I'll just come quickly, and I was like. We eating, eating. <laughs> like, you know, um, but most of the time people are quite nice. They, they're quite chill. On, on, on that topic though, was there ever a crazy experience that you can vividly remember that you can like clearly remember where someone like totally disrespected you, like as a fan or supporter went too far? Yes. What one is it? Um, it's not like crazy, but I felt very affected by it. Um, I was actually at a club with Matthew. Matthew was playing. Yeah. And a lot of the times we bring friends with so that we can like all chill together or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And um, these girls asked me for a picture. And I'm always like, yes, of course you can take a picture. Mm -hmm. But obviously being at the club, people are drunk and I wasn't. And then this girl came up to me and she was like, I want to take a picture with you. Yo, that happened to me as well. That, no, 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 that, that really happened to me. Like I always tell us, I'm not going to mention the club anymore because they spoke to me about mentioning the club on here. <laughs> but anyway, um, someone came up to me and they were like, say, hey, aren't you that guy from TikTok and the grandma t-shirt? Yeah, I was so angry there, but I couldn't like fight because like, yeah, you, can't, you know what's going to happen afterwards. Yeah. Like, no, more, no more food on the table for your family. <laughs> no more brand deals, nothing. <laughs> 
Yeah. But yeah, and then I felt like, yo, you don't have to grab me like that. Yeah. Like I said, yes, I'm standing there. And then they're obviously all drunk. So the other friend realizes like, oh, this girl looks like she does want to take a picture. Mm. But this girl is standing and she's like holding my wrist. And I literally had a bruise the, oh. the week after. But I still took the pictures. And then people, the people that were with her actually thought that I was being stuck up. She was like, no, she don't want to take a picture. She uh, don't want to take a picture. Keep her like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, it's fine. But also don't like push me around. Don't pull me around and, and stuff like that. And also the friends that were with me, they were like, don't pull on her. And then they were like, oh, well, you're now the bodyguards or whatever. And I was like, no, they're just looking out for me. But like, that was probably the worst experience I've had. Yeah, I feel like as like people who are popular, I won't say famous because none of us here are really famous. So I feel like people like feel entitled to us because they watch your videos every day. They feel like yeah. Yo, I can just grab on this person mm. or I can just take on this person. But moving along swiftly, I still want to ask like <laughs> about like social media and uh, like your, your life obviously changed completely in terms of people knowing you. Mm. But also I want to know from a personal point, how has your aspirations changed from beginning of lockdown to after lockdown? Because I know you used to do real estate at the time. Yeah, yeah. So, that was actually, I started in lockdown. Yeah. yeah, I think I started yeah. in lockdown. Doing real estate. estate. Mm. So how you obviously weren't earning at the time when you started real estate or social media, but how did your aspirations change? Like what did you want to do before lockdown compared to like right afterwards when you started earning from social media? Um, for me, I guess it's, it's a bit different because I was, before lockdown, I was a dancer only. So yeah. I studied and then I was like, nah, this isn't for me. Drop what did out. you study? I studied um, sports science at UW, so like half a year. Yeah. And I was like, ah, it's not for me. It's not going to work. It's not looking good, bruv. And then I dropped out. Um, but I'm studying again now, though. Um, but I think goals-wise, it definitely, it kind of changed and also didn't because I always felt like I want to do marketing, yeah. but I just didn't really understand it. And now, actually, I'm doing it because I'm already basically doing it, obviously, yeah, with the social media thing. stuff. So I guess in that regard, it changed for me. Um but it, I mean, it's nice just like lumming at home, mm -hmm. doing campaigns. And, mm -hmm. and I always tell these like people pay us to do like 15, 30 second videos where it, it's like, it's a blessing because, yeah. you know, not everyone's just going to give you whatever amount of money just to do like a quick clip. Um, so yeah, for me, it's been nice. It's been super chilled. I'm excited also like to finish studies and actually start working more in the field, more in the back end. Because yeah. like I said, I enjoy the marketing. I enjoy the conceptualizing of stuff as well. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's perfect. And, 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 and for Yuri, at the time, were you already acting? Because we obviously know you on Aaron's Ar Ar play. Aaron's play. Aaron's play. I got it. I got it, though. I got it, though. I got it. Aaron's um, play at the time. Were you were you already acting at the time before lockdown? Or no. Or just start? So I was also just a dancer before. Yeah. Um, and I also wasn't studying. I was supposed to take my gap year after I matriculated. And then I got the audition for Aaron's play during COVID. Wow. And then started acting, which is something I never thought I would be doing. Yeah. But I actually really enjoyed it. And then I started studying. I first wanted to study physio, actually. Yeah. And then I changed my mind. And I was like, I think I want to do teaching, foundation-based teaching, mm -hmm. which is what I'm studying at the moment. How far are you from us? Third year. Third so year. next year is my final year. Okay. Interesting. So, yeah, I think goals and aspirations-wise, it's stayed the same. Um. I'm also very excited to have my own classroom and teach my kids or whatever. Yeah. Um, still want to do dancing, still want to do acting through it all. So, so yeah. do, you, do, you feel, do you feel like you want to have your own classroom and like sort of step away from social media? Not as a whole, but sort of like make social media take a back seat in your life? For me, social media has always been a back seat to mm -hmm. everything else. It's been like a side hustle. I wouldn't say that it's what I want to do for the rest of my yeah. life. I would love to carry on doing it for the rest of my life but um i think that when i get my own classroom or when i have my own class i would definitely want to take a back seat okay interesting yeah. so obviously then you'll have to be the social media star alone hey man i'm not taking a back seat it's uh, about the money <laughs> it's about the money <laughs> but but how did you get into acting though like you went for audition and you just clicked so well, yes, I did drama in high school, but yeah. I've never done acting and I was always like shy mm -hmm. to do anything on stage or to do it alone on stage. Yeah. Saying words and stuff. Dancing on stage is perfectly fine. I love it. It's my passion. But acting is just something different for me. And then when I did drama, I was like, 
I don't know if this is something I want to do, but I could possibly do it. Yeah. It ties in with my dancing. And then when I got the audition, I actually got it through one of um, my teachers when I was younger, my one of my dance teachers. And um, the role was just to be a dancer. Yeah. And then they were like, okay, they actually like the way she looks, whatever, we could give her a role. Mm -hmm. And obviously my Afrikaans is not the greatest. Afrikaans is my second language. Yeah. So um, I had to like practice, make sure that I know my stuff or whatever. She made me read the script so that you're... <laughs> but you love when I say Aaron, Aaron, Aaron's play. No, but it's like I can speak Afrikaans, but reading it on a script and also they switch between English and Afrikaans. So now it's like yeah. Afrikaans, Afrikaans. Then that English word, yeah. say it in Afrikaans, and then she laughed at me, and I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's basically how it kicked off and yeah. You just took it from there. But how are the working hours? Because I feel like people always see like, okay, she just done this episode of Iron's Play. It probably took them like 30 minutes to film. Mm. But like, how's the working hours? People, they don't understand how much work goes into it. It's a 12 to 13 hour day. Sure. Like there would be times where I would learn my lines or whatever. Yeah. And the next day I have set, I would wake up at four o'clock. They would fetch me at like half past five. And then I would be on set from six till six. Sure. And if you run over time, you run over time. Like, and you can't go home. You must yeah. finish. You, you have must to finish. finish line. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, bro. I can't. I want to do acting, but hey, I can't. Uh, 13 hours, nah. And that's without the learning of the lines. And you must learn that at home, no? Mm, yeah. Sure. That's, how, how was that for you, though? Didn't you feel like you don't have your partner at the what? time because she's so busy learning these lines? Yeah, yes, I know. I feel like it is a nice break. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just joking. Uh, I find it's work, and I also, as it's like um, Rudy, who's our dance choreographer. Uh -huh. I feel like if it's work, then you're chilling. You, you know? understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. You also do DJing, bro. But your DJing came after your social media fame. Mm. Now, this is a very this is a very deep question. But I want to ask, do you feel like there's a lot of people that feel that people on social media are just able to do anything and it sort of like takes away from people who already who have worked 10 years? Like, say, for instance, I, I I played you my song before this. I start music now. There's a guy that's been working on music for like 10 years, but I'm just going to be better than him. I'm not yeah, going to be better get... than him, but I'm going to reach more people. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. So how do you deal with like people like saying, oh, he's just a, a Instagram DJ <laughs> or... Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't know if you've heard it, but I've heard it. People will say, oh, this person is, he's only, he's only getting so much because, bookings yeah. because he's mm. got a social well, media volume. For me, I, I, there's, on the one hand, I get, I get it. And on the other hand, like, if, if it's not working for you, it's not working for you, you yeah. know. Like, me and my hustle has nothing to do with you and mm -hmm, your hustle. Mm -hmm. And um, even though, like, for me, let's take teaching, for example, when I started, I think it was definitely easier than a new person starting because I already had the social media yeah. background. But with that being said, I also worked to get that. I didn't just yeah. wake up and I had 800, 900,000 followers, you know, yeah. I had to actually work for that. So um, I think it's just like diversifying yourself, bro. Like even with the music thing, like you said now, the fact that we have this audience, it's just making the most of it. Yeah. And, you know, so for me, like I said, on the one hand, I get it because I actually still feel that way with some bigger DJs. Mm -hmm. Um, and some guys that's that that like they start when they have like a million Instagram followers, and yeah, now you're like, yo, yeah, guys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you hear them play, and you're like, Shh, so because, sus. yeah, you know. Yeah. But again, that's that's their hustle, and their hustle has nothing to do with me. So for me, I'm like, when I started DJing, I actually also only started like I thought about it a few times, and then when I met with Abit, he was like, I feel like this is your next step. Like you should do DJing, whatever. Did the classes. Um, and then I became a DJ. So I also feel like I didn't just wake up and I was like, I'm a DJ today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually I went to the classes, I did the whole course and everything, learned how to actually DJ and mm -hmm. not just to play music like a lot of people do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, it wasn't, it wasn't. But yeah, so I took the time to learn the craft and then decided to actually be a part of it. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I feel like it's very important because like me also with music, like I, didn't, I, I might release a song next week, but I've been, trying to get better at like rap mm. for the last two years and now i don't see that but people will assume oh he's just a instagram rapper mm. or yeah. youtube yeah. rapper like the same with ksi like how ksi does so many things and people get so upset because he's mm. just using his following to like to obviously explore all the fields but i feel like it's important that you took the time to learn 
and do all that. Yeah. But how was it like starting out for you though when you started DJ? Um, yo, I feel like when I started, it was so different for me because, like you said, from a, a dancing background, you're always it's, it's a performer. Mm-hmm. But with DJing, it's so different because if you dance on a stage where there's 30 people and you make a mistake. Like it's so easy for people just to look past it, but yeah. in the club when you hear, you know what I'm saying? Then everyone's like, "Hi," because yeah. all the pressures on you. When I started, I was yo, I was super super nervous. Mm-hmm. I remember I used to like plan my sets out. I used to practice the whole set at home. Like yeah. I choose my songs, do the set, play it at home before I go to the club. Yeah. And then I have like notes in this order. I'm gonna play the songs. Yeah, focused, for real, <laughs> bro. I was yo. It was hectic. And then I think the one time I was like, I don't smoke to do all of this yeah. work I'm just gonna go and play and then I, I came home and I was like oh, that was actually probably my best set mm-hmm. then I stopped prepping the sets and everything but I think when I started also because I didn't want people to be like ah oh, this guy's just here because he has a big following yeah. you know you wanted to be the best that you could be yeah so that's also why I felt like I put more pressure on myself so when I started I was just like super super nervous and now we're chilling <laughs> is, there, is there anyone that like inspired you to get into the field um not really to be honest like I think I'd be lying if I say I, l- I saw this person. I was like, I want to be a DJ. Like yeah. I said, we had the, I had the conversation with Abit. It made sense. And like I said, I also told Reese about it prior to that conversation. Yeah. So I was like, I mean, we had this this conversation, and I can see why it would work, especially with the dancing background. Mm-hmm. And that was also when, like, what, that was twenty twenty one. So I think it was there wasn't really a lot of DJs that could dance also. Yeah. So that was like the whole the whole route we were going and then waffles blew up and everyone was like i'm gonna dance also so yeah, yeah there's that um but yeah so i feel like i, I didn't really look at someone and was like yo this person is dope i want to be like, like them it. yeah so I, I just got into it because i thought about it someone else also mentioned it and i was like hey maybe that's god's timing so okay uh, interesting and for you reach like how has that changed though because you have you have this boyfriend that's like obviously he's, he's a loyal guy i know math is a loyal guy but like obviously you transition to this guy being in the club all the time, you know the other mm-hmm. club is girls are there. Yeah. Girls are trying to get a, get a, get a taste of um, Mr. Power. <laughs> so, so how was how was that transition for you? Like now having to like adjust to your boyfriend constantly being in the club, sometimes without you, sometimes with you. Well, in the beginning, Matthew always wanted me there to take yeah. videos or to whatever, and I was always keen to be there because I'm like I'm gonna go go and support him. And there wasn't it wasn't a major change because only after like. Okay, we were going clubbing like all the time. All the time. Yeah. Like, so it wasn't a major change, but um, only recently I started like, no, Matthew, I'm not going to go with it. Like, I don't feel like it, yeah. whatever. So I feel like only now when he has gigs and I'm like, I'm going to stay at home, it's a change where I'm like, yo, it's like four hours and yeah, that is yeah. not at home. We're going to watch Netflix with or whatever. But in the beginning, it wasn't really much of a change. I think also because a lot of the times we would invite our friends to go out with us. Yeah. And we would make it like a vibe or whatever and everybody would be there chilling with each other so yeah okay and on the topic of friends though do you guys ever feel like you you find it more difficult to make friends now that you guys are more out there than you yes. did initially For sure. like did you have any bad experiences with friends um I, not really i feel like we were cautious like from the jump because yeah. um, we are, we know what it's like and we know how people are like and so i feel like we we've always been cautious and aware of it from the start so we don't really make a lot of new friends um for that reason specifically yeah. you know but but like there's been a lot of people over the past couple of or the past three years that we've met and we became close with um but yeah i think we're very aware like of that factor because ultimately it's true and as much as people say no it's not true it happens all the time yeah um so yeah i think that we've done quite well to avoid it and to just avoid people that we feel like we don't really oh, I see, I see. I totally understand though because like I I don't I don't I don't probably have the friend issue but I feel like people always want something from you mm. like when you're out yeah. there people always want yo can you post this can you do that can you do that and people always mm. like cloud drive to get you to post something and people have this misconception where if Matthew J. Powell is going to post me in his story if Eddie Wilkins is going to post me in his story I'm going to become famous yeah, yeah I, I like don't people, know people think that when you repost them your followers are going to be like oh my word let me go follow this person uh, people do not yeah. care like <laughs> yeah People just be doing their own thing. Yeah, ish. And it's. Yeah, yeah. I was saying, sorry, sorry to break your word. I was going to say, it's already, if you really think about it, it's hard for you as the influencer to gain followers. So, where are these people just going to see this random person on the story or just like a repost and be like, I'm going to follow this person now? Yeah, yeah. You know? And do you feel like uh, social media or TikTok in specific 
I say because you have like over six, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred, nine hundred, yeah, nine hundred. Yeah, you're famous, famous, then. and you have like <laughs> five, five, six hundred k. Okay. Eight hundred. Eight hundred. Oh, you guys are gone, gone. <laughs> <laughs> but like, do you feel like TikTok in specific has changed, and like people, like everybody's famous, like I said. Mm. Yeah. So how do you think that affects like people who are actually trying to make it a job? Because I feel like there's a lot of people on social media that are doing it for the cloud, for the likes, and mm. they are just trying to like create drama so they can get more followers mm. or interaction like you spoke about. So how do you feel that affects people who actually want to make this a job? And what like what advice would you give to people who are like trying to like make this their day to day job, but now they sort of like lost within this beef mm. or people mm. fighting to get clout. So yeah. yeah, what's your advice to those type of people? Well I think for me personally what I when I started social media, yeah. I always started by like I have to remain myself. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that this is actually me because I don't want I don't want people to come up to me in person and then I'm not the same person that I am on social media. Yeah. So I feel like advice that I would give to anybody would just be to be yourself. Like don't worry about the next person and what the next person is doing the same thing that Matthew said like yeah. if I enjoy dancing on TikTok, if I enjoy doing this type of content on TikTok, I'm going to keep pushing it until I see that it's doing really well. Yeah. So yeah. That's that's interesting. For me, I'd say just post, bro. I think that was my my problem at the start. Um, like you said, there's so much or so many different things happening on TikTok and Instagram yeah. that people are kind of scared to post. And I, when I at the at the start, I was like, no, if I post this, it must get a hundred thousand views. I used to be like, am I supposed at three o'clock uh, on Tuesday? Tuesday yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, on a Tuesday, yeah, when the sun is just here, yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, so. From uh, eventually, I realized, you know what, just post a video. Yeah. And if your video is good enough, then it will pick up the right people will mm -hmm. see the video. So ignore also what, what's happening, ignore the views. And that's a problem that, like I said, I struggled with for a while. I was yeah. like, yo, I'm posting and the videos are doing so bad. And it kind of demotivates you and you, you stop posting for a while. Um, and that's how the people, forget even me, that's you. how that's how people forget about you. But also that's how people make it is they're just consistent and like whether there's five people watching whether there's fifty thousand people watching whether there's five million people watching as long as you keep posting like someone that would want to see your content is going to see it and they'll pick up on it so mm. don't get lost within the hype or within the beef and also don't feel like you need to beef. i feel like so many people especially on tiktok are like they're trying to make beef just so they can yeah, be I, relevant I, I, I don't, I don't get it this, yeah like, there's so many other ways this you can be funny you can be a dancer you can be creative so I don't know why everyone's just beefing on TikTok to get views. Hey, Amen. Every second video on TikTok lately is just beef. It's just beef. Yeah, it's just beef. And and you know what the thing is? It's mainly Cape Town though. Yes. Mm -hmm. I feel like Joe Berg dabbled in some beef, but like Cape Town, they're like they like addicts. <laughs> they all want a beef, bro. Like guys, there's a lot of ways to make like. Con I think that that search thing on TikTok also changed it. You know where like you post a video and then whatever topic is relevant. To yeah, it, yeah. Then it's then it's a topic. Now it's yeah. like you see something and you previously you might have been like, who is this? What is this about? Now you can click there and then you see the whole and backstory. It the beef, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you involved, bro. I know. I mean, I don't lie. We watch a lot of the beef. It's, it's, yeah. entertaining. it's entertaining. I feel like it also creates a scene though, but mm. I feel like there needs to be a limit. Yeah, yeah for sure. But also like. Like you said, if the question is about people trying to make a career out of it, you need to realize that you beefing brands brands don't really care about beef, yeah. you know. They care about you being authentic or you being a good rep for the brand. So if your main focus or your main ways of ways of yeah is, is, is beef, beef, then you're never really gonna get brand work. Yeah. yeah. So have you guys been any beef? No. Never ever. What, what have you guys done like to stay out of it? You just don't engage with people. Yeah. Like, how do you deal with hate comments though? Yeah. Does any, okay. any of the hate ever affect you? Comments. <laughs> I felt about comments. People comment like silly stuff, man. Like yeah. people comment about your weight. It's normal to pick up weight. People yeah. comment about you. If I shoot three videos in the same outfit, I shot it on the same day. Yeah. People will comment stuff like those or stinky tights. Because, yeah, because you wear it every you day. Wear every day. <laughs> like silly stuff like that. But. I think a lot of the times people just compare me to how I look with other people, man. Yeah. So I just like filter the comments. I go, oh, this is stuff I don't want to see. Make sure I filter that. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, I feel like protecting your mental health is important. I don't filter it. I leave it. <laughs> but also, 
most of the time when we get like weird comments on TikTok, it's like little twelve year olds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you click the page and you're like, no way. Yeah. yeah. No. But I, at the start, though, I used to, yo, I used to go over the people. I don't lie. We used like, to respond. Yeah, people would be like, yo, you can't dance, and then I go look at their videos or I go comment on it, and I'm like, and you said I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, oh, you know, and then they all they'll say something, and like I said, usually it is the young ones. They'll say something, and then like a rude comment or whatever, and you coming back, and you're like, why or whatever. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, I just wanted you to respond. Thank you. <laughs> what? Like, say something nice that we'll still respond. Yeah. So, I'll be like, that's yeah. not actually true. Though. Sometimes <laughs> people say that, he's like, ah, leave it. Yeah. But when it's something negative, it stands out. Maybe that's what they seek attention. But mm. I don't think that's the only way to get someone's attention. Yeah. yeah. Like sure. you can do something like overly like great for them to like. Mm, I also feel like for me, I mostly notice people when I see them commenting more than once. Mm. You know, and I'm like, oh my, this is like the third time I see this profile picture. Yeah. And then I'll be like, I say less, I'll respond or whatever. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I want to ask you one last thing before we go. DMs? Do you guys ever, ever receive like DMs like of guys still trying or girls still trying, even though they know you guys are in a relationship? Because you guys are quite popular. I so. do get some DMs. Mm. But like, it's it's very rare. And usually it's just like, Oh, you're so beautiful. And then it's like someone from across the country uh, that uh, <laughs> saw one of my pictures, probably. Um, but it's not like, it's not crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. it's not like people sending you pics and all that, though. Cause, no, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's also our audiences, man. Like, uh, yeah, we don't yeah, we don't really get anything kids. crazy. Like, mm. not no, necessarily not kids, kids, but, but young yeah. ones following us. Mm-hmm. I think the one time, though, we did have a... Um, not we, but I got a message from some random girl saying like, she's Matthew's girlfriend or whatever. And I was like... Why do people do... Like people do that to my girlfriend as well. Um, they like say, oh, um, you're lucky you met him already. Um, or I would have taken him off you or <laughs> stuff like that. But I, like I don't get it. <laughs> That's a bit too crazy. Oh, we've had a weird experience in a club once. Yeah. Where this girl was like, yeah, I hooked up with Matthew. And I was like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't even know this girl at all. Matthew or, right she was like, yeah, but why would she tell me that? And I was like, I don't even know. Also, because I just met her there the first, the yeah. first time that mm-hmm. night. But I know her from Instagram yeah. because I follow her. So then when she came to come tell me this in person, I was like, what was the reason? Is, is it someone like relevant? Like some, no, I won't say, it's just I won't like say a, irrelevant, but I'll say like someone that like, we will know. No, it's really just a random person. I don't even remember her name. Well, I wouldn't say it even if I did. But yeah, it was just this random girl that I've never seen in my life before. But also I was like, why now? Like Matthew and I have been together for four years. Whatever happened before that that. has got nothing to do with Mm -hmm. me. So I I didn't understand why she came to come and tell me that. But I was also like, why is she coming to come and tell me now? Yeah. And Matthew's right here. I was asking. Yeah. So... Yo, bro, she did not want to believe. I had to phone my friend because she said that she knows the one friend. It took so long and then eventually... The thing is, I know her. Like, why wouldn't... Why Why did she have to choose to tell me that, that night moment, specifically? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I know her for so long and I've been following her for so long, why that night and why not just some random other day? Is your heart beating fast, bro? Be honest. No. I was like, I don't know who this girl is and I really didn't know her. And then it came out that I didn't know her. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, now you see. You're chilling. <laughs> Yeah, but no, it was, that's probably, I think that was actually probably one of the, the weirdest experience, going back to your, your previous question. Um, well, the supporter. Yeah, because I, I, I think that's what it was, but it was, yeah, it was just, it was weird. And no, we, but, I yeah. get it though, you're a good looking guy, like the ladies, obviously. Nah, I'm, a, a, I'm a married man. <laughs> you're a married man, uh, locked down for life. <laughs> on, the, on, the, on, on a final topic, I want to ask about like your favorites. Who's your favorite DJs right now? Quick, quick fire. Matthew. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who's yours? Who's yours? Um, yo, I won't lie, I'm gonna say waffles, eh? I'm not just saying it because she's the easy choice. I'm not talking about those guys, I'm talking about Cape Town, Cape Town, Cape Town. Cape Town DJs. I really like um, JMD. JMD? Yo, JMD's yeah, dope. He's, he's I won't lie. JMD is super dope. JMD for hip hop. Um, Liam for piano. Yeah. Um, Envy for gum. For gum, gum. sorry. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> I'm gonna cook in the comments. <laughs> I knew it. Um, yeah, what else is there? I, people don't really play other genres. I also yeah. like the way Alicia's plays. Oh, she was uh, Gina? She's, yeah. Uh, she's really good. Um, she played at the last shutdown, Energy Super Super performance. Mm. And yeah. any influencer that you really enjoy, like um, watching their content? Yo, Reese can answer because I don't really indulge. Uh. <laughs> he was also at the QB event. Um, Intasa. Intizor. Intizor. Yeah. Intizor. Yeah. Intizor. Yeah. Yo, everyone uh, loves Intizor. Everyone have asked that question on the show. I said Intizor. I like watching his stuff. Like, oh, yeah, man. So. Yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's Lico. Okay, elite. And lastly, is there anything like people should look out for that you guys are planning, you guys are doing? Maybe a marriage, maybe a child, any of that? Crazy. I wouldn't mind a child. Oh. I'm just joking. I'm just. Joking. I would not show anything. <laughs> or any- <laughs> No, I'm just joking. I know my mom's going to watch this. I'm just joking, mommy. I don't want a child yet. Not yet. Mm. Yeah, but not, nothing Nothing people must look out for. Oh, um, well, I don't really want to say. I feel like if I say I'm going to add pressure and people's yeah. going to be like, you said you're going to do this thing. And I already said it accidentally. But also evil eyes, I think. No, you don't want people yeah. to know your plans yeah. before you execute them. Yeah. Yeah, so stay tuned. Go follow on the socials and then you'll see what Guan. Okay, guys, <laughs> um, thank you to Matthew and thank you to Reese. Thank you for watching another episode of The Kid Show. This has been a banger. I've been waiting to get these people here for a long time, so I'm appreciative that they actually came. So yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Bow.